um, I haven't uh, started my test for the slides sharing. I'm, I'm very new at this YouTube. Uh, not, we're not on YouTube, actually. We're just on Zoom, and, and, and I'm recording now. Um, but I, I wanted to introduce you with the slides, but I, um, I really don't know how to do it right. Oh. So it might not look great. So we'll just start, we'll just start talking and then later on I can, you know, show everybody what a klutz I am and you know, do the full demonstration. Well, I was the one who was late. I, I restarted my computer. I had some updates and, you know, I thought, oh, it'll take 10 minutes. It ended up taking 20 minutes. So we're both novices at this whole computer thing. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Thanks. Thank you. Um, so, um, Thanks to Multicultural Mosaic, I was able to meet you. And uh, I, I actually learned about Multicultural Mosaic from Augustana Lutheran Church that's a block away from my home. And uh, that was over, that was about 20 years ago, I think. Wow. So, uh, yeah. Is that where you go to church? No, actually, I've been going to um, First Spiritual Science Church for a couple months. I haven't been going to churches in general since I was um, about, oh, I, I was going to be a missionary and I was really, as a teen, no, I was seven. I was seven and I was packing my bags to go to Japan at a Bible camp. Wow. And, and the counselor told me that, um, that he, uh, the counselor believed God wanted me to go from home, not from camp. So, <laughs> what so um, but I'm 77, you know, uh, Sarah, and um, when I was 15 years old, I, I went to Southwestern Bible Institute in Waxahachie, Texas, and, um, and that was 1956, Okay, and, wow. and that's when I saw... Um, for the first time, the signs, whites only, coloreds only. Mm. And I wasn't going to be a missionary anywhere where for any religious organization that had that belief structure. Right. Wow. So that changed my life. That changed Good. my direction. And I stopped going to, to uh, any one church I would visit at random, you know, right. a lot of different churches. Yeah. Uh, and I still do, I still do. Uh, but uh, I, I, uh, I, I, my missionary instincts have been redirected throughout my life. I've been a mixture of um, spiritual and very shallow, <laughs> both. And- We uh, need both. Right to be fully guess, who we are, we need both. I guess, I guess so. <laughs> I guess so. So, um, right? How would we know what spiritual was if we didn't have those moments where we also felt very shallow? <laughs> Just one second. Just one second. I'm busy with my keyboard. So uh, someone, someone uh, came just while we're in the in the middle. Normally we don't have a lot of, but you know somebody came in. So um, anyway, yeah, I I have a degree in dress designing from Fashion Institute of Technology, Ooh. and then I went into science. You know, so anyway, enough enough about that little history. That all started when you mentioned what church do you go to? I kind of go to whatever church I feel like going to that day, if I feel like going. <laughs> uh -huh. uh, I kind of split my time between Colorado Community Church, which is an evangelical church, uh, First Mennonite, which is a Mennonite church, and then a Unitarian Universalist church. So <laughs> yeah, uh -huh. I find beauty in a lot of places and truth in a lot of places. And so yeah. uh, it's kind of one of those things where if... I wake up and I want to go to an actual building for church, then I'll do that. And if I want to go to the mountains and 
and have church there. I'll do that. Oh, yes. And Lucy nature. Goosey, as my mom says, Lucy Goosey. <laughs> <laughs> so what did you want to do as a child? I didn't really have very clear ideas other than things, you know, very early on. I wanted to be a doctor and an astronaut and I wanted to be a truck driver because I thought that truck drivers got to travel all over the place and I love to travel even as a little girl. And then when I graduated from high school and went to college, I was actually just talking with a friend yesterday about that transition, I, I had no idea what I wanted to do. I really didn't have a strong pull to anything. I just, it was sort of not expected of me to go to college, but my parents had saved money and I had it a fund where I could go to college. So I thought, oh, I'll try this, you know. And then two years into college, I was taking all the fun things, you know, like communication and English and theater and leadership and, you know, just fun things for me to learn. And then um, two years in, they said, you need to start taking math and science. And I said, no, I'm not. Goodbye. I'm, that's not how my brain works. I just knew it would not be an enjoyable experience. And I didn't have a specific degree that I was going for in order to have a job after. So I thought at this point, I'm just wasting time and money. So I dropped out of college. I went to massage therapy school because I thought that sounded like fun. And then after that, I got a job as a nanny and then after that, I started working at the church where I took that first initial trip to the border through. So that's kind of a little bit of my wandering path. <laughs> yes. I love the story about, in fact, it, do you want to share some of that story from your book? Sure. I, um, I, I, you could read it or, or, or I can help you read it because I now, I have your book. I have. <laughs> two copies. Oh, whoa! Two copies and a Kindle and an um, a um, uh, what? Uh, I forgot that audio. What Audible? Audible. Audible whoa! Which, I love it. You and have I, more than even my family owns. <laughs> yes. Well, I, I you know I like to scribble in them and I like to have one to share. Mm -hmm. I was so impressed by the fact that right here in Aurora, Colorado, there's a, a place for that, that, that start. Well, I, um, I want you to share this story. Okay. Say it. So do you want me to share a little bit about the beginning and beginning. That trip to the Mexico or just yes, the, the beginning. <laughs> okay. The beginning. I, I yeah. wish, I wish it could start because your beginning really started before that. Your beginning started with a love that I wish I wish you could I wish you knew of that one moment as a child that you knew that that light went on and you never shut it off. You know, that love light in your soul. I don't know if you can remember that, a time like that. I don't necessarily remember a specific moment where I felt that awakening. I think it was a slow understanding of what love means by the people that I was surrounded or, you know, around on a daily basis. I grew up homeschooled and my mom stayed at home with my brother and my sister and me. And then my dad had his job. And so I knew that being around people and being with them, whatever that looks like, doing school or planting a garden or playing, you know, in the fort, in the backyard, just being together was what made me understand that I was loved. And, and seeing my dad make sacrifices so that our family could have a comfortable lifestyle you know, we lived in the country. It was important that we had space to explore and play and grow things in the ground. And my dad worked about an hour away from where we lived. So he would wake up really early in the morning and he wouldn't get home until 
late in the evening, but he did that so that we could enjoy a childhood that was exceptional in my, you know, my opinion. Um, or seeing things like my mom, you know, staying up to all hours of the night, planning the next day of curriculum, what we would learn and putting all of her heart and her soul and her mind and her energy into creating a great experience for us. And so I think just looking back, it was not a moment. It was a gradual, just, this is what it is. This is how, this is what I've always known. And then as an adult understanding how fractured, and I'm not saying my family is perfect. Obviously we have all the drama in the world. <laughs> um, but as an adult understanding how much of a gift my family is to enjoy one another, to want to be around one another, to have the privilege to be around one another. And, um, and so even though growing up, I didn't hear about family separation because of immigrant detention centers or families being torn apart and then deported, I knew that there was something extremely priceless. It was just priceless what I had in my family. And so when I was working at the church in Colorado Springs as a young 20 year old, 20 something year old, I, even though I had grown up in the church and I now was working at a church, didn't really have an understanding of what the scripture, the biblical scripture said about the way that we treat immigrants. And I was, my role at the church, I was the senior and the executive pastor's assistant. And so one morning I went to the office, started doing my daily list of things. And one of the things on my list was to open up their email, the senior and executive pastor's email. And then I would respond to the emails that they received so that it would save them time when they got to the office. And then when they got to the office, instead of having 100 emails they had to read and respond to, they only had five. So one of the emails was from Catholic Charities in Colorado Springs, and they were putting a group of, you know, I think it was five or seven pastors together from Colorado Springs, from all different faith communities. And the invitation was for these pastors to go down to the Mexico-US border to learn about immigration and not just the reality of immigration, who is coming, why are they coming, those kinds of questions or the history of immigration. It was also including this perspective of as people of faith, how, what is our response? How does our faith guide and mold our response uh, to when um, immigrants come to the country that we live in? And so I saw the email and I double checked the calendars of the pastors to see if the dates would work. I realized there were conflicts on both calendars, so they were not able to attend. And I was responding to Catholic charities. I was going to tell them, thank you, but no, thank you, not interested. Because once again, immigration, not a blip on my radar, didn't think about it, didn't really care about it. I mean, just wasn't something I thought about on a daily basis. And then as I was about to hit send, even though I read through the email and I understood the purpose of the trip, I didn't, nothing called out to me except the very bottom, right as I was about to press send, I'm very grateful that these words suddenly popped out to me. Um, and they were simple words, but at the very bottom of the email, it said, all expenses paid trip to Mexico. <laughs> and, I suddenly was very in excited to, you know, to learn more about this trip and to learn more about immigration and all of that. But really it was, I didn't, I still didn't care. I just wanted a free trip to Mexico. And I thought maybe they'll let me go instead of the pastors. I'll go on this trip. I'll learn about all these things they want us to learn about. And then I'll come and report back to the church and then I'll go about my daily life and go back to normal. Um, and Catholic Charities took the bait. <laughs> they said, sure, come on down. So I went on that trip 
And that's when obviously I had a life changing experience because what I was witnessing on the border was unlike anything I had ever witnessed. And almost every single person that I met on the border, whether they were on the Mexico side of the border or on the US side of the border, they told me stories of how our immigration policies were negatively impacting their ability to be with their family. And growing up, remember, so close to my family, it was hard for me to make the connection of not being able to be with your family, even though now all these folks were telling me their stories. But what I knew on that trip was what I was hearing in regards to folks being deported or folks being put into detention centers. In my gut, I knew it was wrong. It was wrong. And it wouldn't be the way that I would want to be treated. It wouldn't be the way I would want my family to be treated. And as a follower of Jesus's words, the words that he said, I must love the Lord my God with all my heart, my soul, and my mind, and I must love my neighbor as I love myself. And I started realizing after that trip, and not in a haughty way, but I, but I love myself. <laughs> like I do, like, you know, and it, and it manifests in different ways, but some of those ways are just very basic, simple things. If I'm hungry, I'll eat. If I'm thirsty, I'll find drink. If I'm cold, I'll find a coat. If I'm tired, I'll find shelter and I'll sleep. And so if I do those things for myself because I love myself enough to do that, then I must do that for my neighbor. It's not an option. It's not if I feel like it. <laughs> you know, if I say, yes, Jesus is my role model and I want to model my life after him, then it's just something I have to do. And so that's where it all started, though, on the border. Free trip to Mexico. <laughs> I, and, 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 and there's a a problem, though, that people re realistically have to deal with, because you may love your neighbor, but helping them sometimes is frightening because it could hurt yourself. You know, so there's that fear factor. And that, I believe, is what is pulling us apart, because there are real obstacles. They're not in our mind and fictitious. They are real. What if, um, you know, people come and you can't take care of them, even babies, you know, people have abortions because they have 10 children and they haven't been able to take care of them because they don't have the money, they don't have the housing, and they don't want to bring one more child into a world that's so tortured with inadequacy and insufficiency. So... Um, whether it's whether it's immigrants or or children birth or um, whatever economic pressures that we feel for our time, for our energy, for our money, for our space, um, you know, uh, like the Titanic, you know, when people had to make a choice, they loved their neighbor. But they had to they had to decide to the men, are we going to love them as much as the women and the children? You know, there were very frightening decisions that we had to make. So when we make a decision that says, Lord, I don't know how to do this. The, I don't see a way. I don't know how to keep this baby alive. And I don't know how to save this man that's on the Titanic that I love. And, you know, he's my husband, and, but I'm going to go and leave him there. Bye, honey. <laughs> you know, I yeah. love you, but I love myself, too. <laughs> you know, you, you, tough, tough choices. And um, you, we, we, we need God's guidance to make these decisions, and, and God doesn't usually have a way of telling us the full story. We have to step out by faith and find out what's possible each step of the way. And, you know, while love is still possible, there's no reason for us not to keep love alive while it's still possible, when it's no longer possible, when, there, when we no longer can see the path, you know, 
And it, it seems to me that when we connect with that higher power, whether that uh, on the Titanic, if there was a way spiritually that they could say, all right, we need a connection to that boat that's, you know, listening to our, our, our um, calls. We, we need a better way, God, show us a way. If they had a way of connecting to that higher guidance system, that, th that what was possible would have been much more. And, uh, and, and in my view, your connection to make love possible uh, is because you are connected with our higher power that guides every cell, every molecule in our body to take it where it needs to be. Because we don't have, I, I, I don't dictate, you know, what color is my hair going to be? Uh, how much is it going to grow? Oh, my God. You know, um, if I if I don't get, if I don't figure out how to um, get just the right amount of oxygen and just the right, all these details are taken care of. I, I don't have. Oh, I got a nanosecond to respond. Uh oh, missed that one. <laughs> you know, for for seeing that um, in me, and I think that's one of the highest compliments ever. And I I remember as a young child, uh, I. I didn't know what an intuition was <laughs> as a kid. I knew that that there were times where it was always in my gut, like my stomach area, that if I thought of something, it I could almost, I, I learned to trust what my intuition was saying. I didn't have the word intuition when I was a young child. Um, but as an adult now, I'm learning so, so much. And that that is such a gift <laughs> and to really, uh, pay attention and to make opportunities to, to hear it better. And I remember after that trip to the border, there was again, my intuition telling me your life is about to change. And I said, no, <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm like, I have a perfect life right now. I'm living in a great apartment with a fabulous roommate, I have finally my own bathroom. Like I had worked really hard to make enough money where I could finally have my own bathroom. I didn't have to share a bathroom with a roommate. I had a great job. I loved my friends. I loved my community. I was so happy. And, and that intuition was like, uh, things are about to change, just an FYI. And for the first year, I said no so many times that it was exhausting, exhausting. And that's actually why I ended up saying yes, because I was tired of saying no. I was tired of waking up every morning saying no, no, no. And saying yes, even though it was scary because it's the unknown and I didn't know what it was going to turn out like or what it would mean, it was still the easier option because it felt like I was on the right path versus, you know, sometimes when, I don't know if you ever go hiking, but I've been hiking a lot this summer. And sometimes there are trails that are harder, but you keep going because you think that you're going to get somewhere that you have to go and you just keep pushing and pushing and pushing. But then on the way back, I realize, oh wait, I could have taken this other trail which would have been just the same experience, but actually even better. But for some reason, I was just oh, going to go this way, going to go this way. But if I would have just gone the other way, it would have been a lot more enjoyable and smoother of an experience. I would have still ended up at the same place. <laughs> um, but finally, when I said, okay, I'll do it, you know, I, I, did, I still didn't know what that would look like. I was still living in the Springs at the time. I was coming up to Denver occasionally for a protest or a lecture or a movie night, everything around immigration, just so I could learn as much as I could. But when I finally moved up to Denver, I didn't know Casa de Paz would be a thing. I didn't know that hosting families in my one bedroom apartment who were coming in from out of town to visit their family who was locked in detention would be a thing. I didn't know that having a post-release support program 
where we would, you know, accompany immigrants being released from detention and get them safely home would be a thing. I didn't know that a visitation program would be a thing. I just knew that this is where I was supposed to be. And so I moved right across the street from the detention center. And I was just there for a while, about a year before I actually decided to open up the CASA. But I just thought, all right, mine as well. If I know that there's going to be something in my life that is about to change in regards to families and immigrant detention, then mine as well get as close to the the um, the space as possible, and then maybe something will will come from that. And it did. Uh, like, oh, but, yeah. But it was not the my reaction right after the border was not yes, let me do this. It was definitely a resounding no. <laughs> Oh, that sounds like that sounds like a lot of experiences I've had. A lot of no's. Um, wow. Um, even this project, I I was resisting, uh, and, but finally I I I began to realize. Um, okay, I I I I felt guided to a better understanding of conscious ignorance instead of unconscious ignorance and uh <laughs> and and how to how god um when you rec I, 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 when you recognize the that you that you are consciously ignorant instead of unconsciously ignorant uh then you ask god the questions god as we know god each individual has a different uh perspective but um i began to feel uh, guided more so slowly, and I was so, um, and still struggle with it, with not knowing each step. But every time I take the step that's possible, the next step becomes clear. But when I don't take the step possible because I don't know what other steps follow after that, then I don't get anywhere. I just I'm I I'm at a st stagnant, non-moving. <laughs> right. It's contrast, right? When yeah. we know what we don't want, we know what we do want, and without knowing what we don't want, how do we know what we want? You know, so. Well, I I I, I knew what I wanted, but I didn't know how. Yeah. Um. So. Uh, Maybe I should start sharing the the um, the uh, slides on screen sharing. So sure. now you now you'll see all the awkward clumsiness of of this whole thing. There's I, so much grace for you right now. Oh, thank you so <laughs> much. Okay, I'm gonna um, try and 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 get it uh, going. So. Um, oh. Oh, yes. I know her. <laughs> you know her? <laughs> so, um, let me see. Now I have to try. I, I don't know how to, to go into the, um, well. Uh, I think if you push that play button up at the top yeah. kind of left. Uh, play, play on the top left. Uh, to move your cursor a little bit to the right. And you see the play. Right there. Oh, there it was hiding. So you see it, but I didn't. Oh, really? Yeah, because because the 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 um, instructions were covering it up. Oh. <laughs> so, um, yeah. Um, anyway, um, so I wanted to introduce you, and uh, um, and there's the the website Casa de Paz Colorado dot org, and um, and Sarah Jackson is the founder of Casa de Paz, a hospitality home for families affected by immigrant detention in Aurora, Colorado, USA. And this picture came from Kevin Chung and uh, in his website, Marketing the Right Way. And this was back in March 27, 2016. It's marketingtrw.com. So, and Casa de Paz website uh, has a beautiful picture. Families belong together. 
And I loved how you told the story about your relationship with your father, have, being able to spend time together and not imagining that a little girl or a little boy would not have that opportunity. So, and then um, The Guardian uh, wrote a wonderful article and um, the book, that which I already introduced, The House That Love Built, uh, tells this, you know, shares this journey and it's such an awesome, inspiring, love is possible journey because sometimes love just doesn't seem economically possible, even for the people that you, you hold dear. And so, and, and the way that um, Sarah Jackson has found to make, to raise funds, to pay for the extra additional costs of a food, mouths to feed, transportation, et cetera, is through her avocation of volleyball by having, uh, organizing tournaments, volleyball tournaments. And this is her, the website, it's called Volleyball International. Dot com and um so are we still on the first slide sorry uh, are you seeing only the first slide yeah so i think you just have to keep pressing your no i'm moving through so um oh. so what is happening is it is not sharing my screen um i apparently have to put this on google in order for you to see it um, I will stop sharing if, the, if I can find a way to stop sharing. Um, I, I, my if you cursor, press, if you my press cursor. the escape button on your okay. keyboard. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I press the escape and now I can come back. Okay. So I'm showing you the slide from my um, I was attempting to show, thank you for telling me. Um, I was attempting to show you my slides um, from my keynote and I'm on Safari. Why don't you try again to share your screen and then instead of clicking play, um, you can just go through each individual slide. Did you see the slides when, when mm -hmm. I, before I hit play? Yeah. All right, all right. So. Um, I will, whoops, just a minute. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to, well, that didn't work. Uh, well, yeah, but, the, but it, it'll look so tacky though, but <laughs> all right, all right, I'll be tacky. Here we go. Tacky is on. Tacky is um, on. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Different. Okay. Just different. Wait. All right. So here's the first slide that I mentioned. There's your website. Then here's your, do you see now that they're changing? Good, yeah. good. Okay. Casa de Paz, where families belong together. And that's, uh, and here's from the Guardian, where you're, uh, and, and there's a, pic, uh, uh, a picture of the book. The house that love built, and um, and here's your volleyballinternacional.com, and um, here it just so happens that um, our our meetup group is collaborating with three other meetup with two other meetup groups. Our topic talk walks. TT Walks Meetup Group is collaborating with Beckworth Doers and Museum User for an East Team Avocation Collaboration Games and sharing our, our practice time learning and making all kinds of mistakes uh, on our YouTube. My husband wants to try to, to uh, interrupt us. I don't know, can you see him? Hello. Hi. <laughs> he can't hear you because I'm, I've got the headset oh. on. So this is, this is all the ways we can do things wrong. <laughs> or right. I love it. You know, I, when I was still working at that church in Colorado Springs, we went down to Africa 
to um, to do a trip down there. And before we went to Africa, we we had to memorize this phrase. It's not right. It's not wrong. It's just different. It's just different. <laughs> different that we're showing the slides. Like this is just different that your hubby walked in. It's not right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So um, so anyway, uh, yes, we uh, our our e steam avocation collaboration games uh, that we're 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 setting a goal to to collaboratively share our avocations uh, in events during the month of Valentine's Day, February two thousand twenty one, and that's what you do. With Casa de Paz, you celebrate in Christmas and Valentine's Day annual events. So I thought, you know, keep your mind open to the possibility that we can start doing things together. And um, so here, you can see in the slide where you see Petey the dog. Uh, underneath his circle, it says TT walks. And underneath our TTW frog circle, it says Beckworth Doers. Can you see that? I do, yeah. Yeah, and underneath the basket, uh, it says Museum Muser. And, and that is an example of when our TT Walks and Beckworth Doers meetup groups uh, collaborate, collaboratively share our avocations, what we love, together, and, and then create an event like the Valentine's Day events with that's the basket and the basket will share uh especially with the museum user meetup group and we'll have um guides to help us with that and meanwhile we, the basket will also be not just the event but on youtube we have a new youtube channel called esteem love and and esteem uh i, I was i i i wanted to let me see. Yeah, here we go. ESTEAM stands for economics from the perspective of the living energy currency flow. And this is both family and pet friendly. So, um, uh, so the pets, they have their own living energy currency flow. They don't have pockets. The dogs and the frogs just do not have pockets for money. So we're, 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 we're putting this on their level, you see. So, uh, I mean, especially TTW frogs, whole family of frogs, uh, it interferes with their jumping if they have a, a credit card or something like that. So we have to, we have to um, give them a little more respect, right? Yeah. And, and when we're respecting them, we incidentally respect nature too, because that's the living energy currency flow is the primary currency of nature and surprise, uh, humans are a part of that too. <laughs> Surprise! <laughs> and during and during COVID nineteen, we're especially aware of living energy currency having a lot of fluctuations <laughs> that are challenging. And um, so and so, esteem is economic, science, technology, engineering, art, and math. So. Um, and here, this picture, by the way, I'll, I'll tell you at the end where, what this picture is about. This, this shows our website on meetup.com for TT Walks, but um, we're really encouraging people to find out about these events in this, with the hope and the prayer that we will learn how to put decent YouTubes and my husband won't walk into the kitchen making noise and everything. And, and, and we'll be able to do a recording that doesn't have background sound because he's now not aware that his sounds are coming through this recording. But, um, but that's, you know, we have to grow somehow. So means that he's um, making is a sign of life. Right. Yes, yes, this, this is a sign of living energy, making lots of noise in the background. <laughs> and um, so anyway, um, so what, what we want to be able to learn how to um, do a nice um, 
professional jobs of, of YouTube so that museums, when they, we used to volunteer before COVID at the Wings Over the Rockies Air and Space Museum, and they don't like a lot of background noises in their videos. So um, they would probably say, your husband is a little bit of a hazard for the quality <laughs> we're looking for. Yeah. So um, anyway, but so we're learning. And great. yeah, and uh, but uh, we're, 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 we don't, we're not going to be wor working alone learning. We're, we're inviting um, the support of uh, a Denver Public Library's uh, computer program and uh, the CSU audiovisual uh, department and, and, and whatever, what I'm sure Denver University has, you know, we're, we're just open to as much support as we can possibly get. Yeah, great. Because we need it. <laughs> in, our, in, in order to build this collaborative uh, event and, and, and relationships and, and, and demonstrate that it, we can enable, make it more possible for love to be possible, especially annually on Valentine, for Valentine's Day events. So this is our current little version of our flyer without a lot of other people to collaborate with. But um, so uh, and this is what our July event that you, uh, you couldn't get on because we, we had computer problems and people weren't able to, um, to get on. Even Richard couldn't, my husband couldn't get oh, on. No. Yeah, I mean, he, he eventually um, uh, used my headset and we figured out a way, but we didn't record it and we didn't share it. We had so many glitches and you were just one of the many who didn't get <laughs> on. And, um, but what, what was happening is we were, um, we were discussing, uh, well, we were, we had a here's how segment where um, each uh, meetup group shared what they, uh, their, the avocation that, that they shared with their group. So um, Topic Talk Walks, one of the many avocations that our group uh, uh, get, uh, shares is um, imp improv comedy. So we were going to do a demonstration, like three to five minutes. And uh, uh, Beckworth Dewar is one of the many um, uh, avocations that they love, that the one that's, that their founder, Winston Walker, started was for African American outdoor adventures. So um, the, it, uh, one of the members of Beckworth Dewar's was showing her absolutely exquisite photos of, of Crested Butte. And we're going to do this again in August oh, great. For, for the last Wednesday because, um, uh, you know, we, we, we considered that that was a rehearsal. <laughs> was, dress rehearsal. I love it. That was a dress rehearsal. It was a Titanic dress rehearsal. But. Oh, no. <laughs> It was, a, it was a dress rehearsal, you know, not too many people overboard, but, you know, and, um, and then our museum user uh, group, uh, that we, Richard and I are members of, of all three groups, but the museum user group part that we shared with Winston Walker and the Beckworth doers for uh, 10 years uh, was all about hands-on science and going to the um, learn more about astronomy and space through the Denver Museum of Nature and Science, 60 Minutes in Space. And so we have a lot of avocations to share that we shared with both Topic Talk Walks and the museum user, but the museum user was the key. We paper airplanes and whatnot through uh, Wings Over the Rockies, you know, we took giant paper airplanes. Uh, you know, in, uh, to the, the Green Lawn Park near there as a part of years ago. And uh, before we started to do a interactive hands-on um, smart cart um, dem demonstrations during cockpit demo day at the wings once a month. 
anyway, so we would do the, we, we would share five minutes each from each group and I would pay the lead who shared their group's um, key avocations, $25 each for, so if you wanted to do that and share the volleyball experience and whatever for three to five minutes, you know, I would obviously pay you because you would take the lead. There's, uh, we actually do have someone in Topic Talk Walks who leads a volleyball group. Um, yes. And we could do a volleyball game, Volleyball Internacional against their team. Oh, and I don't. He will win. <laughs> I'm not competitive at all, as you can well, tell. Well, well, <laughs> yeah, but when we when we do it collaboratively, we may find a way to make the e team part of it, economic science, technology, engineering, art, and math, a part of, of simply a hands-on demonstration that's science-oriented, showing the science of volleyball yeah. and, and the economics of volleyball yeah. and, and the art, you know, that, um, you know, showing it from an e team perspective. Love it. Yeah. So, um, and, and you are ready. Casa de Paz is showing East Team perspective all over the place, you know, showing how to make it economically, use your avocations to make love economically possible. You know, yeah. it's not, so, not rocket science, you know, it's, yes. it's very simple. But it may be simple, but it is scary. It's like Philippe Pettit you know, who, who uh, walked, a, t a tightrope walker, who walked from, mm -hmm. uh, you know, between the towers of what used to be, exist as a World Trade Center in New York City. It's just walking, he's walking, that's all. But he's walking 1,200 um, whatever feet above ground with nothing to protect him. And he is vulnerable to death. Yep. And, and it's that, you know, that fear, that fear factor and that challenge of the, of the no understanding the, the dynamics of the wire of, of your, of his body, of his endurance, of the tensile strength, of the wind, uh, which could sh shake your balance, etc. of the interruptions, you know that could happen, you know, helicopters finding him very fascinating and distracting him. You know, so many things could go wrong that are, that are potentially fatal, you know? So although it's not rocket science, you had to bridge that fear factor with a whole lot of faith and love, a whole lot and, and, and knowledge and that, and, and e-steam uh, for every step along the way, because as you said, mentioned in, in, in some of your videos on YouTube and, and in your book, and you've had death threats. It, they don't, I mean, it is literally life-threatening because people are afraid of what could happen if, uh, if, if the immigrants become more than we can handle more, more, if we put our own economics and life at risk. So this fear factor is rocket science, Sarah. It is rocket science to understand how to bridge that fear factor. It, it, it doesn't happen accidentally. And economics is not, is rocket science in terms of relationships. If it was so easy we wouldn't have self-destructed so many times. It is tough. And, you know, sure, t walking a tightrope is just walking. But it's more than walking, and it takes a lot of practice. And collaboration takes a lot of practice. And, it, you know, in, in many ways, collaboration is rocket science. So, um, so anyway, um, let's see, where am I? Um, so, we're aiming for um, a Valentine's Day events. So here you see Beckworth Dewar's Frugal Frogs team, um, Dewar Dogs 
team is TT Walks and our goal is museum user and that just showing what we did in July for practice. That was our practice collaboration time. And if our practice had worked well, the, our, our, our uh, museum user uh, goal would have shown the collaboration of um, the photography, outdoor photography from Beckworth Doers and the um, improv comedy from TT Walks. And we would have incorporated it in our energy, hands-on interactive science demonstrations about energy, in including living energy currency, because we're talking living energy currency economics, in the, into our three to five minute part. And you've probably seen origami jumping frogs, right? Yes. Okay. So that's, that's one of our key um, giveaways uh, de to demonstrate that um, the, just as the airplanes in the wings over the Rockies Air and Space Museum would not exist without living energy, they wouldn't fly without living energy, our origami frog can't be designed and built and jumped without living energy. So that's our, the key source of energy that, that is the foundation of our economics and of course our survival. So um, anyway, and then these are the three groups, they're all on Meetup. And so anybody could um, join whichever one or all of them and switch from back, back and forth, you know, you could share an avocation with, with each and, you know, and um, so, and here, the story of grandpa tree frog not too many people know that he was the neighbor living in a tree next door to Albert Einstein. And um, so uh, he asked Einstein, why did you come up with an equation for energy that isn't living energy? He said, don't you know that a frog's economics is, I think it's about a living energy flow. And that, the, the energy you're equ equals MC squared, it's not talking about li living energy. So I said, well, I can't know everything. Why don't you just encourage your grandchildren and to keep on sharing um, origami jumping frogs and keep asking the question, what's the equation for living energy? Because humans are going to do a better job of finding it than frogs anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so... And, frog. Yeah. <laughs> so so and then this is the grand finale is just a reminder that this is our goal is to practice um, practicing collaboration monthly on Zoom and on the last Wednesday of the of each month, which said it was mentioned in an earlier slide. But um but you just go to uh, East Team Love channel on YouTube, and hopefully there will be videos introducing each uh, next event and, and our goal. Great. And that's, yeah. So that's it. Now I'll take it off of share. Sorry. For <laughs> thank, you. thank you for your patience. And I, I only asked you for an hour, so. Um, but well, let's get back in touch. And, and, and what's his name who plays ping pong? And he is, what, what is this? Oliver. Name? Oliver. Maybe you and Oliver, maybe in, if, if you're interested, maybe in September, we, we can introduce both of you on Beckworth Doers. Sure. We'd and love that. He was, he was very nice to be African American. Well, he's not African American. African's okay too. <laughs> he's yeah. from Nigeria. Um, Cameroon. Oh, Cameroon. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. No, you're good. And his avocation is ping pong. And he's supposed it. to be one of the best. He is amazing. I hope that once it's safer to gather again in groups, you could come out and watch him play sometime. He's Phenomenal. I'd love that. Well, maybe I should come over there and talk with you through a Zoom uh, uh, just for recording it. You know, we could just 
record it in your space so you can we will be social distancing six feet apart and i'll be on a whatever phone or whatever and yeah. and introduce and get, to get ready for september so that i can put it on online and yeah. Well, right now I'm I'm still in self isolation. My brother has stage four cancer, oh. and then I have a couple other at risk immediate family members. So I um, right now I'm just doing everything by Zoom, but okay. hopefully, hopefully soon because it's getting it's getting to the point where I'm like I want to see other people. <laughs> sure. Okay. Then let's let's just do a Zoom. What day is good for you? Um, I have to check my calendar, so maybe we could just go um, and check maybe. it via yeah. email. Is that okay? Maybe, sure. Maybe next week or some, you know, if there's a time. We'll try again, and, and this time we'll make it shorter. And, um, you know, uh, we don't have to record it. We'll just, we'll just do an unrecorded. Um, and and I, I don't know what your time budget is, but, you know, I can easily fit in an hour but you but you might be more comfortable with with a half hour yeah we'll just have to see i have no i i have to check my calendar the night before just to know what i'm doing the next day i have very yeah. good memory as far as that yeah goes. yeah well i i pick, i keep everything on that my uh, digital calendar i'm yeah. sort of need to do that because i forget too yeah, story of my life. <laughs> well, thank yeah. you for, have, for having this conversation and for sharing more about what you're doing too. It's very exciting and I'm excited for the future of us working together again. Oh, that would be wonderful. I'll, I'll send you a link to the YouTube as soon as I get it up. I'll just, I, I won't do any editing. I'll just let it go as is. Perfect. And that, as I learn more, then it will be, you know, it'll look better. It'll just right. look different, isn't that? It'll just that look right? different. That's it's right. Different. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you. All right. You. Thank Have you so much. Bye. Bye, bye, Sarah. Thank you.